Welcome to the first class of the language lessons for Living in Education 5. And just welcome. Let's pray before we start. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this day where we can study English together. Please be with us this time and give us wisdom from heaven so that we can learn a lot and we can enjoy studying English together. We hope to grow like Jesus Christ and love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Let us become a worker of your kingdom, God. We love you so much and thank you for everything again. Did you say we prayed? Amen. So this is your textbook and it looks like, like this. So please go ahead and get your textbook, get your pencil and get your eraser as well. If you are ready, I want you to open your book, page 21. Listen where it says move up day. Move up day. How is it possible that it's move up day already? Micah thought as he got dressed for church. Last year he um last year had gone by so fast. He had learned a lot from Mr. Cunningham and was thankful to be in his fourth or five fourth or fifth grade class for one more year. To make things even better, his buddy Jin was moving into Mr. C's room today, so they will be classmates again. Last year, everyone has been blown away by the replica of Solomon's temple that Mr. C brought to their classroom. Micah thought it was cool to have a retired architect for a teacher and couldn't help but wonder if there would be another one of his replicas on display today. He found himself looking around the room as he and Jin walked in the door and sure enough, there was a table set up at in front of the room. Something lay under a large drape of that table. I knew it, he said. What do you think it is, Jin? It could be so many things, Jin replied. Since Mr. C has troubled the word, it could be the Taj Mahal or even Colosseum. Except it doesn't appear to be a very tall structure. Maybe it's a building Mr. C designed himself. I guess we will have to wait and see. Mr. C welcomed everyone and then had the students introduce themselves to one another. To one another, I know you're all wondering what is under this covering. He said, "This is a project I worked on over the summer. It is probably the simplest model I've built, but one of the most meaningful." So this is what it looks like here, exercise 1D1 on page 22. Whenever you want to check out the page numbers, it'll be on the bottom here. It's going to say page 22. So the first one we're going to talk about is an analogy. Do you remember what analogy is? An analogy shows a relationship between words. Even though the sets of words are different, they have something in common. Study the example. Day, light, night, and dark. Do you see how the sets of words have something in common, right? There's something in common. In the day, it is light just like at night, it is dark. The words day and light have the same relationship with each other as night and dark. Do you remember how to read an analogy? The analogy we studied has special symbols that help us to read it. So we know that the sign here, that means is two. And if we have two of them, it means as day, light, night, dark. So day is the light, as night is the dark. If we were about to read this sentence together, it will be soft is too hard as easy is too difficult. Correct? Alright, then let's let's look at the second page here. An analogy is like a fun puzzle to solve. Remember to study the first two words for clues to solve the analogy for the last two words. So read and complete the analogies. The first one, tree is to climb as ocean is to, what, what can we do with ocean? Yeah, we can swim in the ocean. Burger is heavy as feather is to light. Right? 
so heavy versus light. Pumpkin is to orange, as tomato is to red. Very good. And uh, we could think of this like maybe strawberry is to, oh, whoops, I should have just draw dots there, not a whole line. Survey is to maybe red, right? S, banana is to yellow, right? So we are looking at the color red and the color yellow when we think about strawberry and a banana. Very good. And then let's look at page 23 here. We're going to talk about nouns here. So I want you to circle the word noun. Noun is a person, place, or thing. Nouns can also name an idea. So this is very important, guys. Let's look at the example here. We have boy, city, ball, truth. So we call any of that has names of person, place, or thing, or an idea, we call it a noun. So, a proper, na proper noun names a specific person, place, or thing. A proper noun begins with a capital letter. James Madison, Creation Museum, Nashville, Monday, New York Yankees, so all of them, they start with the big letter, the capital letter, right? Because they are the specific person, the specific place, or a specific building, or a specific day. So let's look at the bottom here. Underline the nouns in the sentence, write P above the proper, proper nouns. Number one, Mr. Cunningham has troubled the world. So in this case, Yes, Mr. Cunningham. So however, we're going to underline the noun. And this will be the proper nouns. Has troubled the world. So world has a noun. Number two, the display could be the Taj Mahal or even the Colosseum. So in this case, display will be your noun. But your proper noun here is yes. And we're going to write P above it. Class was going to be fun. So in this case, class is noun, but it seems like there's no proper nouns here, right? Okay, very good. Let's move on. So now we're on page 23. We're at a proper noun for each common noun. Country. We're going to think of a country, maybe Korea, states, maybe you can think of Hawaii, one of the most um, popular states in America, city, Seoul, street, maybe Broadway street. Whoops. River. What river do we have? We have Amazon River, right? Amazon. Ocean, maybe Pacific. Book of the title. Sorry, book of the Bible, like John. Or it could be anything else, Mark, Luke. It could be Genesis, right? Month, if you were choose to, to write a month. Now it's in January here. So we're going to write January. What day do you like? I, like? I like Sunday or Saturday the most, but I'll write Saturday here. Saturday, holiday, I love Christmas. Person, maybe we can think of Paul, or you can write your family's name too. Team, um, we can think of a team, maybe like soccer team. So it could be like Manchester United maybe. 
or you can write any other team that you know, the names of a team. And then book, maybe we can think of Harry Potter, the series. Okay. And here it says write a sentence using at least one proper noun. So we can say, like, especially me, I'm from Hawaii. So we can say, my home, my home state is Hawaii. Right? Or maybe you can say, my mother language is English. Something like this, we can say. If you need more time to look at my answer, then you can always take a pause, take a pause, and if you're done, you can play it, okay? If you need more time. So don't worry. Just take a pause anytime and you need. All right, so however, we're done with page 23. So we're gonna move on to the next page of page 24. Sentence types. Remember to start the first word of each sentence with a capital letter and end with a punctuation mark. So we have four different types of sentence. Imperative gives a command, ends with a period or an exclamation point. And we have the second one, declarative. Makes a statement, ends with a period, exclamatory, exclamatory, expresses strong emotion, ends with an exclamation point. The last one we have, interrogative, it asks question and ends with a question mark. Okay, let's write some of the example sentences here. Write an exclamatory sentence. It could be like something, I, something that surprises you. I met BTS today. And then you could end with an exclamation point. Write an interrogative sentence. It could be like a question, right? Did you? Did you get a sign? Write an imperative sentence. It can be go wash your face. Something that commands something. Write a declarative sentence. It could be like people need to wash their hands before eating something, right? So anything that you can declare. So here it says, be sure to check your sentences for correct capitalization and punctuation. So if it's about exclamatory, exclamatory sentence, then you're going to have exclamation point. If it's interrogative sentence, where ask questions, you have to have question mark. If it's imperative sentence, then you should have, you should write as comment. If it's declarative sentence, then you will make your sentence like declaring something. Okay. All right. So page 25, this page, we're going to do it by ourselves, And I will ask you to do this as your homework. However, in like the lesson here, we're going to skip this page. And I want you to look at your page 26. So if you look at page 26 here, it says easy rules. Let's start with easy rules. Vowels and consonants make up our words. Let's take a closer look at how we use them. Short vowels. In order to spell a word, vowel sound, short vowel sound, I should say, only one consonant is, indeed, is needed. So example, up, right? 
In order to spell a long vowel sound, a second vowel is needed. So, made. Compared, compared with up, made. It's a little different. It sounds more longer. So, you need two vowels here. A and E. However, we have some exceptions here. The letter I and O may say the long sound alone before two consonants. So already it's of kind, sold, okay? Also, the vowel, vowel pairs. When we have vowel pair, the first vowel is really long and the second one is silent. For example, made. Right? It sounds like one letter. Some vowel pairs make a new vowel sound together. For example, boil, mouth, down, right? So O-I sound, O-U sound, and O-W sound. And here we have consonant pairs. A consonant blend forms when two or three consonants are blended together, but you can still hear their individual sounds. For example, stop. Scrub, scrub, right? Some consonants work together to make a new sound, like ch 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 chain, sh shop, that, photo, right? So they do have some new sound. The Q U pair. The letter Q is always followed by U. This pair makes the Q sound, and it's only letters that make this sound. The U does not act like a vowel in this part, like queen, queen. The GH pair. We only use GH at the end of a word or before the letter T. The GH is either silent or makes the F sound. The letters GH are paired with vowels to make one sound of e or each or ouch or off. So taught, say, high, tough. Correct? Good. Okay, so we have rarely, the letter S rarely comes right after the letter X. The letter J is rarely doubled, and we rarely and a word in I, U, J, or V. So here we have some spellings and we have some words to learn. Bind, brown, bond, chosen, though, each, naughty, nay, night, fancy, plain, quaint, save, scream, soak, soil, stove, strand, thunder and told. So I will leave this part for you. Let's make it fun. You can go ahead and write fun sentences until you have used all the spelling words here. So I want you to try for that and I want you to leave it as your homework. And we will finish the first lesson here. So I will see you in the next lesson. Bye! <laughs>
please go ahead and take out your textbook, take out your pencils and erasers, and get ready for the lesson 2, Scripture Connection on page 29. Look at some pictures here. It says the title, The Finding of the Savior in the Temple, 1860, the artist William Hallman Hunt. So, your scripture connection says, read Luke chapter 2, verse 41 to 52 from the Bible, and answer those questions from number 1 through 8, right? So, let's go ahead and read this. The boy Jesus in the temple. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey, but then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintance, I guess. Um, and when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. So, where does the picture take place? So, if you look back to the picture, it's happening in the temple. How many people are in your picture? Are you sure you find them all? Look again. So if you try to count them all, I guess it'll be over maybe 20, over 30 people there. Who are they? Describe the people. So what would they be? They're the people who live in Jerusalem. And the Bible says they're the pictures, they're the people of like teachers and those just citizens and just people or just old people, elders, right? And here also says, what are the colors used in the picture? And there are a lot of different colors maybe, right? But most likely it seems like there's a lot of yellows and there's a lot of reds and pretty much like maybe like darker colors, like mixed with white. What is happening in the picture? Jesus is sharing God's words, right? Point out some details found in the background. So if you look at the backgrounds, maybe um, is it? Seems like ocean maybe? And maybe there's no wall because this is a temple. And there's a lot of people, right? Sit there here. And how does this picture make you feel and why? Well, I would say if, if we think the purple cloth is Jesus, maybe this could be his mom. And this could be his dad. And maybe those are the people who gathered up to listen. Because they, even if Jesus was really young, he was sure enough to share God's words to the elders already, right? Because Jesus is the son of God. And what can we learn from this picture and the story tells? So like we just said, Jesus was not just a man, but he is the Son of God, right? <laughs> so, 
Now we're going to look at page 30 together. Here it says, exercise 1 day 6. Look at the picture we studied and find the little girl in the lower left hand corner. Try to image what she was thinking as she watched the scene in the story. Write a description of the scene in the picture based on the little girl's viewpoint or perspective. So if you try to find this little girl, which is right here, hope you noticed her. So if we were would like to write about some words as her viewpoint, it could be something like, who's that boy and why do people listen to him? Did he lost his parents? He seems like about my age, but addressing God's words? That's amazing. I would like to be a friend of him. Maybe she could think something like this, right? So you can use your imagination to just write anything based on the girl's viewpoint. If you need more time, you can take a pause here. But we're going to move on. So let's look at day two, sorry, exercise to day seven. Now, in today, we're going to talk about possessive nouns. So a possessive noun shows ownership. We add apostrophe S to the end of a noun to show that it's a possessive noun. Example, the lion's mane is beautiful. The beautiful mane belongs to the lion, correct? Yes. Plural possessive noun. So, plural means more than one. When a possessive noun is plural and ends with an S, we simply add an apostrophe after the S. Now, it's after the S. So, the lions, and you have apostrophe, apostrophe, means are beautiful. Why? Because your subject is plural. There is more than one lion with a beautiful mane. The noun lions is plural and ends with an S. We only add an apostrophe to the S to show it as possessive noun. When a plural noun does not end in S, then we add apostrophe S. For example, the children, we know that this noun itself is in plural, but it doesn't end with S. The spelling is not ends with S. So that's why we add apostrophe S in this case. Class went to the zoo. The noun children is plural, but it does not end in S. So we add apostrophe S to show po uh, what is it? position. Next page. So we're going to try some of the examples here together. If we have cousin, if we would like to change to a plural possessive noun, it would be what? Cousins. And you will have an apostrophe there. How about uncles? Yes, the spelling itself ends with S already. So all you need to do is just to put apostrophe. Men, the word itself men with E is already in plural form. However, it doesn't end with S. So, right? Todd, Todd, sheep, sheep, right? Cows is already S there, so. Write a sentence using the possessive form of the plural nouns, cockatoos. So we can say the cockatoos, right? Fur is colorful. Write a sentence using the possessive form of the plural noun, dear. The deers or right the deers uh the deers 
the deer's florus, which means where the deer's leave, is beautiful. Okay. Good job. Next page. Sentences, subject and predicate. A sentence must express a complete thought. It must have a subject and predicate. So subject and predicate. Predicate. Remember, the subject tells whom or what the sentence is about. But the predicate tells what the subject does or is. For example, Jesus was teaching in the temple. So in this case, the subject is Jesus. And the predicate is was teaching in the temple, right? So we're going to do number two, one and two, three together. So we're going to first of all, underline the subject and circle the predicate. Mary and Joseph, right? What did they do? We're looking for Jesus. The people ask Jesus many questions. So the people ask Jesus many questions. Jesus went home with his parents. Jesus went home with his parents. Right? Very good. Let's look at the next page. And then we have some simple subject and a simple predicate. So the simple subject is the main word or words in the complete subject. Hint, hint. Look for one or more nouns or pronouns. The simple predicate is the main word or words in the complete predicate. Hint, look for the verb. Example, very hungry children ate their chicken noodle soup. In this case, the complete subject is the very hungry children. Simple subject, is the children. However, the complete predicate is ate their chicken noodle soup and the simple predicate is ate. Now let's do number four and five together. Underline the simple subject and circle the simple predicate in each sentence. Number four, the excited boy asked for a piece of pie. An excited boy asked very good. The boy's generous mom handed him a large piece of cherry pie with ice cream on top. Oh, sounds so yummy. So who handed him? Yes, mom handed him. Okay, very good. And then we have some of idioms and funny phrases. So idioms are common phrases that are used to mean something completely different than their literal meaning. For example, let's shake things up. This means someone is going to be shaking something up like an earthquake or salt shaker. It means let's do something different than we normally do. So in that case, you can say let's shake things up. So here are some examples of idioms. See if you can explain what their common meaning is. Not the literal one. The first one, I will jump in the shower. So what do you think this means? I will jump in the shower. So basically this means that you're going to do something now or we're going to do something quickly. And then the next one we have, it's raining cats and dogs. Have you ever heard about this word? It's raining cats and dogs. So just means rain, it rains very heavily. So heavy rain. So if it's rain heavy outside, then you can say it's raining cats and dogs. Isn't it funny to recognize how it's different? And then we have more of some idioms here on the next page. Or the same page actually, but the next slide, I guess. That costs an arm and a leg. 
So I think it's about something like spending money, right? Because it says cost here. So this means something is extremely expensive or like excessively excessively pricey something is very expensive to buy you hit the nail on the head it means to do exactly the right thing last one her answer was the last straw this could mean something like no more mistakes or problems why because you already made so many so since you already made so many of mistakes or problems already you you know you don't deserve any other chances it means isn't that interesting <laughs> all right if you're done writing, then we can move on to the next page, which we'll just skip. So, but you can try this on your own. And I want you to look at page 35. We're going to look at more easy rules about some spellings here. So let's study some more easy rules. Soft and hard C. The letter C is in the most used, the most used letter. The letter C can make a hard sound k and soft sound sh. When the letter C is followed by vowels E, I, or Y, it usually makes a soft sound. So, scent, circus, or fancy. The letter C also makes a hard sound like cat, can, cook. Right? Letter C and CK. Double the letter C to keep. The vowel sounds short in the first syllable of the word. Of the word, I should say. Uh, raccoon. Or we use CK instead of CC where it is followed by the vowels E, I, or Y. So, black cast picking lucky. Right? So, you CK when it follows the short vowel. So, duck. Okay. And we have letter K now. Use K when another consonant is right after the vowel. So drink. And we use K instead of C if the K, K sound is followed by the vowels E, I, or Y. So make, kind, flat key. When the letter K it comes before N, it is silent. So night, no. Right? Very good. And then we have some alphabetical order. So write your words in alphabetical order. So we can do this together. So the first word, it will be what? Should start with A, right? So it will be something like account. Next word, it will be this and then we have c's yes cracker we have curvy we have finicky we have nicky we have insight we have no we have knuckle. We have Lucy. We have all. We have picky. 
scared. And pocket. And risky. And reckless. And scroll. And soccer. We have token. We have yak. And we're done. So I will see you in the next lesson. Um, don't forget to finish any of the pages you didn't do. You can look back of this lesson and you can fill in the answer together. Okay, bye. <laughs>
plural pronouns as you, we, them, and they. So go ahead and memorize them. Memorize them all. And some of these examples. Will you sing a song? We are going to sing a song about America. Let's look at number one. What is the singular pronoun in the first sentence? So singular pronoun, singular pronoun, you, right? Number two, what is the plural pronoun in the second sentence? The second sentence is this one and we, very good, we. Write a sentence using a singular pronoun. This could be I, right? Love, Jesus. And with plural pronoun, we can say we believe in God, like this. Very good. Let's look at the next page. Oh, by the way, if you need more time to write this down, go ahead and take a pause here and then you can always continue, right? You're page 40 and student. So, we call that something noun or nouns pronoun stands for. For example, Maika and I are building a model. We are working on it today. Number three, what are the incidents? The pronoun we stands for. So who's we here? Very good. Maika and I. And again, we're going to talk about possessive pronouns here. So remember, possessive pronoun, oh, possessive means ownership. We do not add an apostrophe or an apostrophe S to pronouns to make them possessive. We simply use possessive pronouns. Possessive pronouns can be singular or plural. So singular possessive pronouns my your her his its but plural your our their possessive pronouns that can stand alone mine yours ours his hers and theirs so let's use the pronoun his in two ways mr c showed us his replica so in this sentence the pronoun his it's used to show ownership, right? So some possessive nouns can stand alone. That belongs to the possessive noun does not have to follow it. In the sentence below, the pronoun his stand alone. Notice it is also singular pronoun. So this is his. It means that we don't need any other explanations. Therefore, we can say his can stand alone in some of the sentences, how you order your words, how you um, use your grammar. So we can do some of the practice here together. So we can say something with singular possessive pronoun. My, what? My pencil. My pencil what? My pencil is right there second one plural possessive pronoun so their books are on the table last one that can stand alone we can say the notebook is mine very good in this case mine can stand alone right as your previous page says mine and here on the bottom we have vocabulary adventures so are you blue or blueberry huh? what it means it's important to learn the rules for writing spelling and making senses Oh, making sentences. 
But learning new words, such as building your vocabulary, can make language both descriptive and very detailed. For example, am I blue? Could mean you're sad. Or it could mean you literally are the color blue for some reason. But even the color blue can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Consider the following descriptions of some blue colors and used. Uh, blue colors used in crayons and what the colors look like. We have such a thing called denim blue, sky blue, midnight blue, robin's egg blue, navy blue, cyan. We have another blue, sapphire blue, burial blue, turquoise, turquoise, I don't know how to read, but we have cobalt blue, pale blue, indigo, and lapis blue. Or even, even if um, we have more blues color here, cornflowers, so we have like baby blue, right? We have all the different kinds of blues here. So if we would like to make a sentence by using those different descriptions of blue, you could be like, I see. The blues in this image, right? So there are a lot of different pictures. I mean, a lot of different colors of blue. So we can say, there are Blue, very blue. Baby blue. Sky blue. Cobalt blue. And so on. There are too many blues here, right? Okay, if you're done, we're gonna move on. So, we have some interjections and conjunctions. Interjections are added to a sentence to express emotion. It could be yay, wow, hooray, now, ouch, yes, no, oh, stop, well, thanks, and please. Like, commonly follows by an exclamation point, but not always, though. Here's an example, oh, comma. I didn't know that. So if we were, if we were, um, if we were asked to write a sentence using an introduction with a comma, we could be like, wow, comma, that looks delicious, right? This will be the comma. And at the bottom we have conjunctions so a conjunction is a word that connects words and phrases so what do they do they connect things so for and nor but or yet so if you take the first letter of each word it changes to fanboys correct so acronym an acronym uses letters to stand for words, so they can use acronyms to help us remember things. So here's a sentence that includes the conjunction, Clary, or sorry, Claire and Micah waited in the hallway. In this case, and will be your conjunction, right? The conjunction and joins together two words, Claire and Micah. So, combining sentences. Conjunction helps us to write good sentences. For example, the dog chased the chicken into the barn. The dog chased the turkey into the barn. So basically, these are two same sentences but have a little bit of different meanings. But most of the forms are the same. So if you would like to combine, they will be the dog chased the chicken and the, tur the turkey into the barn. We use the conjunction AND to combine two sentences into one. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. So if we would like to combine those two sentences into one, it will be 
Jesus loves you and me. Correct? Okay, very good. And here we're going to skip this page 45, but I want you to look at page 46, which says some spelling here in introduction. Letters G and J. The J sounds is spelled J, G, G, E, and D, G, E. When the letter J is used, it is usually followed by the vowels A, O, or U like jam, jog, jump. When the letter G is followed by the vowels E, I, or Y, it usually makes soft sound J. For example, gentle, giant, or gym. When the letter G follows a short vowel sound, it is usually spelled D, G, E. This is to protect short vowel sounds since we never double the letter j so ridge fridge right the letter g also makes the hard sound yogurt is that cool the ch sound the ch sound the ch sound is spelled with the h and t c h so we use TCH after short vowels such as catch, kitchen. However, we have some exemptions here. Attach, ostrich, much, rich, such, touch, sandwich, and witch. So we use CH for all other words such as rotch or chain, check, chain. Right? chair and here are some words that we can solve the riddles so the first one i wear this to bed so what do you wear yeah you wear pajamas right pajamas i eat this for lunch yeah you eat sandwich i eat this for dessert so you eat fudge Wait, fudge. I move a lot. What do I do? Fidget. Wait, fidget. It turned on a light. Switch. Drawing a quick picture it could be a sketch. I put dishes in this. Oops, I guess spelling is, mm, it has to be with O. I chunk taken out. The chunk taken out what? Notch. And I guess this one should be a different answer. I guess we can use our let's just leave it blank because I'm I seem like there's a little bit something wrong here so I do this with three balls so what do you do you juggle that in the bouncy texture like sponge duck out of the way dodge and you have hatch and ride a horse jockey and mar margin and let's see uh it has to be ostrich and please to get married you can get married at chapel and they hatch eggs and which one the latest Z will it be gadget and the last one to my pleasing clicking I'm not sure what should be here did you guys find out I don't think we used 
os oh yeah we did use ostrich uh did we use hutch maybe hutch yeah we didn't use it so it should be hutch okay yes we're done so go ahead if you need any of the if you missed anything go ahead and re review this lesson and i will see you in the next lesson bye Thank <laughs> you.